Hello everybody. So today we are editing a photo of one of my clients using the Puppet Warp tool in Photoshop. I already taken the photo from Lightroom to Photoshop and now um, what I'm doing is selecting the subject. In this case, thank God, the Photoshop AI just uh, chose it for me beautifully. And now what I need to do is basically just uh, mask it out because that's where I will actually be using the Puppet Warp tool, which is hiding in here. And like what you see what I'm doing right now is um, adjusting all the points. Um, I'm actually adding a little bit more than I need to just to make sure that I'm changing the body position accordingly. Um, so how this tool works is basically changing the positioning of your subject in according to the points that you're going to give um, this tool. So you're letting the tool know how and where are the points that are some type of uh, breaking point where you need to kind of adjust. So what I want to do is actually take that um, dancer's ha uh, hand and make it slightly more up along with the leg as well. Um, just because the clients straight away were like, yes, we love this photo. However, our positioning could be slightly better. So I suggested that no problem, I can change it in post. So this is what we're doing today. And as you can see, I'm adjusting those points slightly just because every change of the position of this point will change and affect pixels on the rest of the stuff as well. So we need to be very gentle in here and make sure that the body still looks how it should, you know, like we don't want to do an alien type of edit. We want to do something that will still look natural, but just better. <laughs> And um, I also decided that with that leg up, um, the leg down of our female dancer needs to be slightly adjusted too, um, but just tiny bit. So this is what I was doing there. I was also kind of thinking of maybe adjusting the male um, dancer's legs, but then I just decided not to. It's all those like tiny changes that you need to be doing. I wouldn't suggest using it in like horrendous, outstanding, over the top moves just because it's not gonna do. I am quite happy with the results, um, just to like compare it, how it was uh, with the background. So it's a slight change. Um, it's not big, but it's significant with those tiny adjustments to make it look real. And, well, let's do some cleaning, I would say, or like clean up of my own work. So uh, let's actually name um, our layers in Photoshop. So just in case I know what I was doing when I will look at this lovely image uh, a few months from now. Um, what I'm doing at the moment as well, I'm working on the background layer. I'm yet again selecting uh, the, um, the subject just because I want to actually do a content fill on it. Uh, just because as much as what we've done before, which is basically um, selecting the subject on a different layer and then using the puppet warp on it, now we want to clean the background behind the subject because whatever we moved um, on the subject layer, now we have to actually adjust the background to the new position that the body is now changed to. So what I'm using, and this is just how I do things, you don't really have to do it the same way. Um, I just 
choose the subject and then decide to fill it in um, using content aware tool it doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't have to be so accurate just because we're actually going to be manually um, clean uh, we'll be manually cleaning the background anyways um, so just so you see um, this looks kind of all right we fit it out pretty well and now we're gonna um, do the actual cleaning job because this is what we do when it comes to photography we're basically all we do most of the time is just housekeeping so as you can see when i filled out um the subject using content aware tool now it's slightly easier for me to actually clean the background um, and I'm just using a clone stamp tool the easiest but you can do that with various different tools um, from hemming brush to patch tool whatever is working for you whichever tool you think it's best for you of course like adjusting everything on the go like brush size and flow and all that stuff um, I just found it slightly easier to clean up when you actually did that content aware fill on the subject before because it just saves you loads of time um, yeah so the shoe is pretty much done I'm just making sure that nothing else is visible on any layer so we can proceed to uh, do the down bit which is the shoes in here and it's just a lot of like tiny work now so I'm just gonna zoom in in a second and show you exactly what I was doing but it's just a fill out um, job uh, stone clamp tool yet again and from quite a lot of angles like as you can see now I actually don't have a lot of things to do because that's what you are supposed to do work smarter not harder <coughs> oh excuse me <coughs> all that talking you know and like my body's like no nope. let her cough in the middle of a record like recording on top of the video so as you can see the cleanup is pretty straightforward uh, when you use the content aware fill first um, it's just way way smarter in, in my opinion of course <laughs> about my own work um, but yeah it's just tiny bits to clean nothing too much um, now and as you can see it's basically we're just kind of left with like that outline and a little bit of blurriness which in overall picture doesn't um, bother anybody it actually blends well with the actual background so there's not much uh, for you to do just a little bit of like using the clone stamp tool um, and just be quite accurate uh, with that and just even in here you know there's just a bit of an outline for the shoe but nothing too crazy what I would probably do which I didn't do for this picture I would add a little bit of shadowing um, at the bottom of where the new position for the shoe is because we've changed that a bit um, so I feel like what I kind of forgot to do is a little bit of shadowing it still looks great without it like don't get me wrong but I think it could need it could use a little bit of shadow um, it's still like natural shadowing of the heel itself uh, on the sole but like where the shoe is and touching the ground that's where a little bit of shadow should be as well even though the direction of the light is pretty direct at the shoe it would still produce a little bit of shadow so make sure that you've done that 
as well in your work if you're using puppet work and change in position just make sure that your shadows are also accurate um and yeah just still cleaning because again that's what we do um this bit i just had to kind of overdo so then i'm gonna reverse that and yeah there you go it's like way way better the job is cleaned now and we can save all the projects and everything and uh, go back to Lightroom and don't forget to subscribe like and share okay so while our image is being saved um, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me and letting me show you how to use the puppet warp in action and now let's actually take this image to Lightroom so we can export it further or work on it even further and then actually export everything and send it to the client thank you so much guys don't forget to like subscribe and share and please leave me um your comments about how was your puppet warp usage in photoshop okay see you next time